Hi, and welcome to AI Insight. Yeah, I know, we changed the name, but we're hoping this time it'll become an iconic name. So this is our weekly look at all the movers, shakers, and things that are most exciting for us in the world of AI. My name's Matt Wicks, I'm co-CEO of the Virtual Forge, and I'm back in England after two or three sunny weeks in Portugal, and now here in England, we have sun, we have rain, we have floods, we have cold, but right now it's okay. So while I head back to the office, I'm gonna hand over to Matt so that he can tell us about the movers and shakers. Thanks, Matt. So, First up this week is something that's been released by AWS. It's been around for a couple of weeks, but it's still pretty new. So this is the introduction of flows to their Bedrock tool. So Bedrock is the tool which is used for making AI available at the end of an API, very simply designed to be very easy and very quick to scale and use. Has a number of different elements to it. Agents are the ones that are most common at the moment, which allows you to build unique, discrete pieces of functionality, just like many other agents in many other tools. The flows are a really interesting addition. Let's take a bit of a look. So AWS Bedrock has agents that you can build and these are very simple to, to create by popping in prompts and then being able to select a model and that's everything that you need. So here you can see I've got two agents, one of which is designed to take text input and create a limerick, the other of which, which is designed to take text input and turn it into a formal serious newspaper report written by a pompous reporter in the 1850s. Just the sort of thing you need everyday models for but a good way of illustrating what's wrong. So I want to create a flow which connects these to, to, so the idea of a flow is that one agent can go to another agent, can go to another agent, can call a service and so on, to create a chain of situations which effectively allows you to build in uh, agents as and when they need to be sequenced into your, into your process and therefore build, um, as we're seeing all over the place, a chain of agents to deliver results. So I'm creating my flow and I'm just going to call it 1850s Limerick Report. So this is a relatively new feature. Um, and as always with Amazon, you need to specify the uh, the role that you're using to be able to, um, to have the permissions necessary. And then it's simple drag and drop. So flow input is the start. So this is the point at which somebody types something into the prompt box. Uh, I'm going to drop in my first agent and map that agent to the agent I previously um, chose, which is as simple as clicking and choosing Limerick agent, uh, give it an alias, and then I've just got to say that the, delete that initial connection and say that the string, which is the input at the beginning, goes into the input of the agent. So what I typed in the prompt box is now being sent straight to the first agent. Uh, this will then run the process. And now I want to add in my second agent and connect the, and again, specify that it's the 1850s reporter agent. Uh, and connect that to the, the output of the first agent becomes the input of the second agent. And the output of the second agent is the output that goes to the client at the end. So in other words, it's going to take some text in and then give me the output from the Limerick and the 1850s agent. As you can see, there's a lot of other things I can add in here. Uh, I can link retrieve or send to S3 storage. I can link to Lex, which is the AWS tool, which is the underpinning of uh, Alexa, in fact. So I can create and make use of chatbots and so on that I previously created. I can link to a Lambda function. Uh, so I can do various different programmatic things that are already part of my organization or my application, um, or to a knowledge base. So a set of information that's been stored based upon my company's information. All of those possible. Um, but in our case, we just have a very simple flow that we've built here uh, that I'm now ready to save and to test out. So here we go. Um, my prompt is a man gets off a bus and drops his computer in the rain. Starts to run, uh, gives us some flow output. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, takes a little bit of time because it processes through the various different agents. And then at the end, it gives me a nice output, which has gone through, taken my text, enriched it by the limerick, and then has taken that limerick and turned it into uh, a piece of pompous 1850s newspaper reporting. So here we go. Tragic incident before gentleman commuter. It was great consternation. This publication must relay the information, the unfortunate events that transpired a public, public, upon a public conveyance on this very day. And so on his modern day writing desk, a costly laptop computer is then known, slipped from his grasp, <coughs> et cetera, et cetera. 
The chap seemed quite put out. He cast his eyes downwards in utter dejection at the mangled remains of his prized laptop. So it's basically taking, effectively, it's taking each line of the limerick and turning that into a paragraph. I can dig deeper and see the trace. In other words, I can see the, eight, the initial input that came in. Um, a fellow stepped off of the bus. His laptop was causing a fuss. It fell with a spatter. The rain made it shatter. That drenched man was in a bit of a muss. So it's taken that, um, that limerick and now it's turned it into this. And you can see under the hood exactly what happened, how long each part of the process took uh, and the results. You can then take that flow that you've got and you can publish the flow. And when you publish the flow, it then becomes available within all of your other applications uh, to be able to, uh, to make use of. So number two this week is AlphaFold 3. So AlphaFold 3 comes from Google DeepMind and Isomorphic Labs, both of whom are owned by Alphabet, the parent company of Google. Uh, this was actually released, AlphaFold 3 was released earlier this year in May, but it caused some controversy when the paper was released in Nature magazine because they released the paper and they only released pseudocode and didn't open source the whole code that was available there. With previous versions, AlphaFold 2 and so on, this had been done. AlphaFold is a model that's capable of modeling protein. What's interesting about AlphaMode 3 is it's capable of modeling how proteins interact with other molecules. And by not releasing the source code and limiting the access that scientists had to it, it meant they were not able to test things like how drugs impact the proteins, which of course is one of the most interesting use cases for it. This has now been released in response to the backlash and the criticism that was received from the scientific community. So now anybody with a Google account can download AlphaFold 3 and use it in their research. Of course, the usual elements apply in that it's a not for commercial purposes license. Although interestingly, there have been a large number of models inspired by AlphaFold 3, not least of which is one created by TikTok's owner ByteDance, uh, which have also been released with slightly different licensing arrangements. McKinsey have released a really interesting study around Gen AI and the paper and packaging industry. Now this one is super interesting because obviously paper and packaging is a very real, very practical thing. And you might think that it's not necessarily immediately associated with Gen AI. But interestingly, almost all executives who were interviewed believe that Gen AI, Gen AI should be used by their companies. And about 77% of them say that they, their companies intend to do so, which is a colossal uptake for an for a, uh, industry like that. The thing I thought was most interesting was in terms of people's concerns about things. Um, they had a number of different concerns that were iterated. The lowest on the list was technical expertise in the area. Highest on the list was a lack of a modern data stack to be able to take advantage of Gen AI which I think is an interesting problem that we're seeing a lot of the time with various customers and clients. They all have the enthusiasm, the keenness, the energy, and the and the uh, C-level buy-in, but then they run up against the problem of legacy, legacy systems and how do they integrate those into Gen AI. To a certain extent, of course, AI itself is the solution to that problem. Quick ad, if you want any help in this area, give us a shout at thevirtualforge.com. We're very happy to help you out. So in the words of sports tech, ESPN has recently announced that they've been working on an AI avatar called Facts, created by their innovation labs. So at the fourth annual ESPN conference, Kevin Lopez, ESPN's Vice President for Development and Innovation, announced that they're currently working off this, uh, this avatar, which will, which will integrate with uh, ESPN analytics data, uh, and then will be used in uh, an unclear number of uses, but certainly for kind of pre-match discussion and things like that. Watch out, Gary Neville, are your days numbered? So a particularly unexpected one for number five today, which shows just how far AI is reaching into every place of the world. At St. Peter's Church in Lucerne, they are having a two month trial of an AI Jesus. So this is basically an avatar which sits on the screen and you can engage with and talk to and will answer questions based upon theological information that it's ingested. Now, it is being pushed as an art installation rather than as, of course, theological guidance. Um, and of course, they are saying it's not a confessional, don't go and confess your skin, sins to it. But it's quite an interesting use and quite, a, quite an edge case to see how far people are willing to push it. It'll also be interesting to see how people of faith react to being able to go into a religious environment and say, hello, Jesus, and get a response. So that is all from AI Insight this week. Let us know what you thought of the show. Let us know what's moving and shaking your world, in AI terms anyway, and look forward to speaking to you next week.